This is GTV. More fun than a barrel of monkeys. It was a cold, foggy, overcast day as the tiny steamship Suchanga makes its way across the bay. The first mate notices something on the radar when suddenly the ship gets hit with a mighty blast from above. The captain is assured that it's no problem, just a whale. Another blast knocks the ship over and whatever it was can be seen darting to the coast. The captain is in disbelief. Could it have been a kaiju? This is the place where it all happens. A place where dreams and desire can make anything possible. This is the big city. And one day, a pair of vagabonds, known as Mario and Luigi, the Mario brothers, arrived here, looking to make a name for themselves. The brothers are amazed at the city skyline wondering just how many people could live here. They turn a corner and suddenly smack right into a billboard. Come one, come all to the Princess Peach Circus. See the amazing Pauline and Donkey Kong acrobat show from July 15th to September 15th, 1981. All ages welcome, first come, first serve. No refunds. Well, convenient for the Mario Brothers, the circus just happened to be there. A long queue extends out from the big top tent, where a large group from the Mushroom Kingdom has come to see the show. The Ringmaster Peach begins the show with Donkey Kong showing off his moves to the delight of the audience. Toad, Peach's assistant, asks how did she ever find such an amazing animal. Peach recalls the day as she was vacationing on Donkey Island, saw him, then took him. Donkey Kong overhears Peach and remembers his days on Donkey Island, freezing up, too sad to move. Meanwhile, the Mario Brothers try to sneak into the circus, as they have no money yet. They can't enter quietly and are caught. With no recourse, the brothers beg Peach to join the show. Peach says they aren't even fit to clean the monkey cages, though they might be fit to be clowns, for 5,000 yen per night. Peach turns to the crowd and announces that this is the moment you've all been waiting for. The big acrobat show starring Pauline and Donkey Kong. The crowd roars as the acrobats take their places. However, Donkey Kong refuses to move. He's too homesick and won't move an inch, let alone perform the act. Peach has no idea what to do. The show begins. The Mario Brothers step up and volunteer to stand in for... No to stand in as Donkey Kong. The brothers, in a giant monkey suit, climb to the top of the high platform. Pauline from afar yells out, Donkey, you can do it. Jump and take my hand. Pauline leaps into the air, and so do the Mario brothers. Peach watches on, naturally afraid of the danger she's just put everyone in. Donkey Kong grabs Pauline in midair, and she flawlessly spins through the hoop for a perfect landing on the other side of the stage. The crowd loves it, and all the Mario brothers have to do is return to the other side. Mario grabs the bar, but Luigi can't let go of the other one. Caught in mid-air, the suit rips in half, and the Mario brothers fall to the safety net below. Pauline is in shock. The crowd is infuriated and demands their money back. Then, suddenly, a dark shadow appears over the big top tent. A giant hand tears through and grabs Pauline. Everyone is horrified, except Donkey, who's happy to see his papa again. Peach, now just realizing she captured a baby, now also realizes she just stepped in it big time. Outside the big top tent, Papa and Junior reunite, and Junior asks if Pauline can come along too thinking that she is his mother. Papa agrees, and he takes Pauline away as she cries for help. Mario stands in the way, demanding Pauline be returned. Donkey Kong throws a barrel Mario's way, causing him to trip and fall over. 
letting Donkey Kong escape with Pauline. Mario gets back to his feet and says it's up to him to find Donkey Kong and save the day. Luigi certainly didn't ask for this. All right, son, point out the animal that did this to you. The beast is back. Now with 100 levels of pain, Donkey Kong. New for Game Boy. The Mario Brothers charter a plane to search for Donkey Kong. Well, actually, they can't afford it, so they sneak aboard an airplane going in the direction of Donkey Island, stowing away on the outside. With their destination in sight, the Mario Brothers parachute down into the jungle in search of the kidnapped Pauline. Donkey Kong returns to his happy home with his son and beautiful new wife. An assertion Pauline refutes. She refuses to stand in the sight of Donkey Kong one more second, as she is a lady after all, and should not have to see Donkey Kong in an undressed state. Junior gives Papa the idea to dress up and look more like a human, to which Papa grabs a snake and wears it like a necktie, much to the shock of Pauline. She faints, and the three lay down for a midday's nap. Meanwhile, the Mario brothers are in some trouble as their parachutes have gotten tangled in some vines with no way to escape. Suddenly, Mario sees a monkey who, to their surprise, can talk. He offers some help by letting the brothers grab onto his tail and get out of danger. Now that they are safely across, the monkey asks for some help himself, as his hand is stuck in a candy jar and he can't get it out. Mario tells the monkey to simply let go of the candy in the jar, which frees his hand. The monkey is very grateful and says he owes the Mario brothers for their help. Mario pulls out a picture of Pauline and asks if the monkey has seen her. In the blink of an eye, the monkey grabs a vine and says, follow me. But it isn't to find Pauline. A stampede of giant ladybugs is headed this way. Mario and Luigi grab a vine and make it across, though still get trampled by the herd. The monkey says, look, there's a lady over there. It's Peach. The Mario brothers are shocked to see her. What about the circus? Peach nervously tells them that she was worried and came to see if they were okay and needed anything. She even brought them some candy. The monkey puts his hand in the jar and gets it stuck again. Mario shows the monkey the picture of Pauline again and says, keep looking. They come to a waterfall and find Pauline's handbag. In order to get it, Mario gets slingshotted to the top. He hits the side of the waterfall, grabs the bag, then hits the ground hard. Peach inspects the bag to find that it's empty. The search continues to the top of an active volcano where somehow Pauline's hat is inside. Peach decides Luigi must go in. Mario and Toad send Luigi down while Peach cheers them on. The rope snaps, but Luigi does survive. Moving on, the group comes across Pauline's umbrella. Peach goes to grab it, but falls into a trap. The trap sets off a chime that alerts Mizumashi-kun that they've caught something. He runs to tell Junior, who despite not wanting to wake up, goes to check it out. Toad spots Junior from afar, and Junior gets upset, not wanting his mama taken away. Junior charges Mario, sumo style, knocking him to the ground. Luigi, still on fire from the volcano, charges at Junior as well. The confrontation is tense. Luigi looks like he may win, but Junior gets the upper hand, sending Luigi flying, flying directly into a trap which has sharp bamboo spikes as a floor. The monkey jumps in to save Luigi by extending his tail. Luigi swings back, delivering a cartwheel kick to Junior. The monkey tells Peach that he would do anything for the person who taught him how to free his hand from the candy jar. Luigi ties up Junior as Papa looks on. He's off to hide Pauline so that the Mario brothers can never rescue her. Mizumashi-kun begins his morning yell, and Pauline wakes up to find herself still in the grip of Donkey Kong. Far away, the Mario brothers, along with Peach and Toad, can hear Pauline's cries for help. Following the sound, the group soon spots footprints and follows them until they reach an impassable divide in the mountainous jungles of Donkey Island. Using some quick thinking, Toad volunteers to get slingshotted across the divide which afterwards, he sends a rope for the others to walk across. 
Luigi begins to walk across, but returns, telling Mario he's afraid of heights. Mario tells his brother, just keep your eyes focused on the mountain peaks ahead and all will be fine. That doesn't sit well with Peach, and she demands they build a sturdy bridge instead. On the other side, it seems the ape footprints have turned into dinosaur prints, and what looks like a scary T-Rex is actually the mischievous work of a bored Junior. Mario admonishes Junior, and as he tries to get away, a crab cuts the rope, freeing Junior, who hurriedly makes his escape. Mario and the others chase after him, are slightly misled by a self-portrait of Junior, and then find him trying to head for the hills in a garbage can. Mario and the others soon discover that Donkey Kong lives atop a giant pyramid. Papa praises his son Smarts for finding a way home, and now that they are all together at the temple, the wedding to Donkey Kong and Pauline can soon begin. Pauline objects, using any excuse she can think of, including that she's too slender to make a suitable match for such a big ape. Papa then forces Pauline to eat and eat in order to beef up her size. With Mario and the rest soon on the way, Junior pulls a lever, sealing off the pyramid and unleashing minions to keep Mario and the others out. The Mario brothers say that it will take smarts and skill to fend off this army and get right to it, knocking over the stone guards in the way. Peach then takes the slingshot and sends Mario, Luigi, and Toad smashing straight through the pyramid walls. Peach uses the opportunity to finally be alone to answer the call of nature. Luckily, Mario, Luigi, and Toad arrive at the right place and the right time as they land right at the altar mid-ceremony. Donkey Kong throws a mushroom at Mario to attack. Mario obliges, but it's poison. The shock sends Mario over the edge of the well in the pyramid. Luigi and Toad grab on in an attempt to save his life. As Luigi and Toad struggle to hold Mario, the pastor begins the ceremony. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to witness the union of Donkey Kong and Pauline. Luigi, struggling to hold on, hears a voice. Let him go. It will be all right. Luigi drops Mario and he falls down the well. Luigi realizes it was stupid of him to listen to a voice from nowhere and let his brother fall, but the voice speaks again. Trust me, the god of Donkey Island the monkey that the Mario brothers helped not that long ago. He says he will replace this poisoned Mario with a new, handsome Mario who can never lose. The monkey god throws the new, handsome Mario right in front of Donkey Kong. Before the pastor can ask for the I do, Mario pounds Donkey Kong's head with a hammer, burying his head deep beneath the floor. Pauline is safe, and just in time, mere seconds before becoming Mrs. Kong. Just then, Peach runs through the door. Not only could she not answer nature's call, but she's been captured. The pastor was Junior in disguise all along, and now he has the upper hand, taking Peach for himself. ゲームボーイ With Donkey Kong laid out cold, Mario has rescued an unconscious Pauline, and despite Peach having been kidnapped by Junior, plans to leave now and take Pauline home. Junior asks if Mario will just leave Peach behind. Yes! They slide down the pyramid and make their way home. Donkey Kong comes back around and bursts into tears over losing dear Pauline. Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Pauline have made it back to the coast where Peach's boat is docked. However, Toad doesn't seem to have the key. Peach and Donkey Kong show up to tell the others that she had the key hidden in a safe place. Junior grabs the key and says now the boat belongs to him. Then he re-abducts Pauline and locks Peach along with Luigi and Toad 
in shackles, all while presenting Papa with the marriage license. All he has to do is sign to make it official. Mario was able to make an escape, but with Donkey Kong ready to set sail for his honeymoon, there's not much time left to save the day. Mario sneaks into a barrel, which Luigi and Toad are forced to load onto the ship. Junior erases Peach's name from the ship and rechristens it the Honeymoon Ship, and they set sail. Aboard the ship, Toad steers the boat while Luigi is made the cook. Peach volunteers to be Junior's personal caretaker, always to be at his side and take care of every need and want as he sees fit. Junior's first job for Peach? Cleaning the head. Pauline wakes up and asks where she is. Donkey Kong tells her she's on a boat in the middle of the ocean. Oh, and they're married now. Luigi presents dinner for Pauline and Donkey Kong. Mario is still hidden in a barrel, and at this moment is being used by Donkey Kong as a seat. The immense weight of his tuchus causes the barrel to break, exposing Mario as a stowaway. Donkey Kong picks up Mario and plans to finish him off once and for all. Watching on, Luigi has to ask himself if Mario, saved by the monkey god, was one person or two people. Is another Mario out there? Is this the weak Mario or the handsome Mario? It's all terribly confusing, isn't it? Just then, Junior runs in saying something is wrong with the boat. Toad confirms that something is caught on the propeller and needs unjammed or they'll be stuck. Donkey Kong tells Mario he's going down there to fix the problem and throws him right in the ocean. Under the ship, Mario can easily spot the problem. A giant squid has got a hold of the boat. The squid, with his many arms, surrounds the boat, grabs Mario and Pauline. With five more arms still free, it could mean the end of everyone aboard. But then, from the edge of the horizon, something appears. Handsome Mario, riding a dolphin while playing a guitar. He plays a song to soothe the giant squid, then takes off his cape to reveal a full samurai suit and with eight strokes severs the squid's arms, freeing the boat, Pauline, and Mario. However, the giant squid isn't finished as he now goes for Donkey Kong. You would think this is a good thing, but once Donkey Kong is finished, the rest will surely fall easily. Showing up on a raft just in time is... Professor Mario? Was that a game? He tosses a size capsule right into Donkey Kong's mouth, making him grow 40 times his normal size. His expansion causes the squid to become completely dismembered, left to swim wherever the current takes him. It certainly was a good thing all these Marios kept showing up, but now a gigantic Donkey Kong is standing in the middle of the ocean. Out on the ocean, things have calmed down, at least somewhat. With everyone out of danger, Donkey Kong asks Professor Mario for another size capsule to make Pauline as big as him. The professor says he doesn't have any more, and Donkey Kong begins to cry as he's so big he can barely see Pauline, and he knows that the marriage will have to be annulled. Pauline asks to be let go, and Donkey Kong runs away, across the ocean. The Mario Brothers celebrate, but there is still the question of what to do with Junior. Peach plunges his face, and they all give him a well-deserved whack with the ball and chain. Then, it's time for a taste of his own medicine, as Junior is forced to do some cleaning of his own. But Pauline interrupts, asks if she could speak to Junior. She hugs him, and says everything will be alright. It wasn't Junior's fault, she says. He is just a baby. Pauline says she would like to return to the big city and continue the circus act as Junior's mama. A wonderful idea, says Peach, except that there's a giant water spout in the ocean headed right this way. The swirling water and winds wreck the ship and sends everyone back to Donkey Island, leaving them stranded. They soon find that the minions of Donkey Kong have been waiting for their return and go on the attack instantly. Much to Junior's delight, he watches on as Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, and Professor Mario get a whooping. Peach tells the professor that this is all his fault for not being handsome Mario and if he were here, would save the day. The professor says he doesn't even know handsome Mario. Then, speak of the devil, handsome Mario shows up to clean house. But his nose falls off? Scotch tape pops off from his eyes? 
His pants fall down? Handsome Mario is actually the Monkey God! And if that isn't the worst of it, a giant tsunami is on the horizon. Well, it's not just the tsunami. Donkey Kong has returned. The professor tells Mario that he should know. One of the side effects of the size capsules is extreme rage and anger. Donkey Kong reaches his own tower and starts smashing. Not a problem, says Mario, as, hey, it's his own house. But Pauline, she's at the top of the tower. The Mario brothers set off in a race to the top, hoping to reach Pauline before Donkey Kong. The damage inflicted onto the tower is causing it to sway and crack. Mario reaches the top first and with Pauline, throws barrels down, hoping to stop Donkey Kong. As barrels rain down, Mario slips on one, trips over and falls off the edge of the tower, taking Donkey Kong down with him, landing with a giant crash. Mario is still in free fall. Pauline tosses a rope to Luigi and he dives down, catching Mario just in time. The Mario brothers then leap to the ground for a perfect three-point acrobatic landing, much to the delight of everyone watching. Donkey Kong survived the fall and the effects of the size capsule begin to wear off, returning him to his normal size. Pauline, after surviving such a traumatic experience, has a sudden change of heart and realizes both Papa and Junior need her here. And with the Mario Brothers clearly having the skill set, would be a fine replacement at the circus for Pauline and Junior's old act. Peach agrees that that's the best and Toad concurs as not having to feed Junior will save the circus a lot of money. The Kong family waves goodbye as it's back to the big city for Peach's new circus. Slide the cards. New e-reader for Game Boy Advance. Slide the cards to play some of your favorite games. E-reader comes with a classic game and a sample pack. More games sold separately. Reading E for everyone. Thirteen years have passed. The Princess Peach Circus is bigger and more popular than ever. The Mario Brothers became famous acrobatic stars, and people from all over the world came to see the amazing show in the big city. One night, Peach was getting ready for the grand finale of that night's show, when suddenly, a crazed man starts shooting everywhere with a giant machine gun. His name was Bowser, the king of the Koopa, who ruled the world beneath the big city. He demands complete control of the circus and all the money it's made too, as having the big top directly over his world for so many years means Peach owes decades of back rent. Peach and Toad, with their hands tied, fork over everything to Bowser, who says it's not enough. Toad crunches numbers, but says there's no way to bring in any more money, unless Peach and Mario get an idea. Let's bring back Pauline and Junior. A big reunion show would bring a large gate and they can charge extra to boot. They set off back to Donkey Island, which has now grown into a popular tourist destination, bringing in visitors from all over the world. Walking around town, Peach hears someone calling her. Hey, baby, the voice says. It's Donkey Kong, Junior, all grown up, so don't call him Junior. And he's got someone with him, Diddy Kong. The four aren't sure it's really him, but then the monkey god appears to assure them it really is Donkey Kong, and in fact he had prophesied Peach's return. Before any more pleasantries could be exchanged, an arrow zips by, nearly hitting Luigi. Where did it come from? It looks like it came over there on Miffy Hill. From there we can see the mysterious rival of Donkey Kong who has kidnapped his father known these days as Cranky. Peach sends Mario, Luigi, Donkey Kong, and Diddy Kong over to rescue him, to which they all admit that Peach hasn't changed much since she was last on Donkey Island. To their surprise, a whole army is waiting. Donkey Kong calls his own reinforcements and a massive battle ensues. The mysterious figure tells the old Crank that Mario is on his way, and in his old age, the Crank is senile and mostly blind. He charges 
and attacks his own son. The battle between the two armies continues on when Mario and the rest decide to board some of the animals nearby and charge full steam ahead. Mario and Donkey Kong deliver a one-two punch to the leader, who loses his covering and is revealed to be nothing more than a mere squirrel. The squirrel says he wanted revenge for being reduced to a mere resident of Donkey Island in the new version, while in the old version, he was a powerful boss. Mario said that the old version was much too hard and in fact, had things stayed as the squirrel would have liked, no one would have been able to make it to the end of the game and no one would know the squirrel existed. Well now, everyone knows the squirrels of Donkey Kong Island very well. The squirrel is impressed with Mario's answer and flies away with a new outlook on life. With all of that sorted out, the Mario brothers can get back to the matter at hand, finding Pauline and bringing her back to star in a reunion show. Well, here she is after all this time, just as beautiful and in shape as she ever was. With Pauline content with her life on Donkey Island, no reunion show ever happened. Bowser tore down the Princess Peach Circus and built a parking lot over the site. The end.